welcome, welcome back to 4F Beauty, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, what I do know is that this particularly grungy fall autumnal bring me pumpkin spice latte and a hot cross bun toasted and dripping with melted butter look has been created with this makeup obsession palette called take it to the grave try to get it so you can actually see the writing without it reflecting to it's just not going to work, is it? I'm just going to do that. So, Makeup Obsession obviously is part of the Makeup Revolution brand. So if I slip up and call them Revolution, I'm having a senior moment. So if you want to see exactly how I achieved this look, how well, or otherwise, the shadows performed, then my friend you. You're in precise to the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, switch your phone off, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right, just quickly, this is a teaching channel where I want people who are complete beginners to be able to follow my tutorials. That combined with my chronic pain means I don't blend that quickly. So, if I'm not going quickly enough for you, up here somewhere, somewhere up there, is a speed widget. Please feel free to use it. I won't be offended because, let's face it, sweetie, unless you tell me I'm not going to know. And even if you do tell me, I'm probably not going to be offended. Right, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. Let's get you zoomed in. As always, I'm using my Chrome Pebble Primer. I bought this as a sample pot, where basically it's the, it's the normal size pot you buy, but it's only half full. Um, I bought this when I bought their loose pigments, pastel pigments, to try earlier this year, and I've got this much left. But, I like it so much, I've got a backup pot. So you can see they are exactly the same size. And, uh, just so you can see that's not see this is how full the pot is when you get it if you buy the full size so you get your money's worth um, I do have a discount code for it all my discount codes are listed but you know let's get on with this now a lot of people with deep set eyes like myself sometimes referred to as double lidded eyes very often are told or mistakenly believe that they have hooded lids because we have similar issues we have transference of shimmer onto the upper lid if we're cutting our crease we can't just cut the socket we have to come up onto the upper lid and even when we use glitter glue we'll get a bare patch right through there I'm going to talk you through the differences between the two types of eyes and then I'm going to tell you how you can follow any tutorial on YouTube and just adjust it so that it works on your eye shape. When I look straight forward and relax my brows you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner so I don't have hooded lips. It's only if your static lid completely covers right down to your lash line part or all of this mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded eye or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. If I cover my mobile lid this side, visible mobile lid, and then close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again that tucks back away. If I cover the static lid and do the same thing, you can see I've got lid space there that tucks back away. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that gives us the same issues that people with hooded lids get. So, two very different fixes. If you have hooded lips, 
get something like this or a pencil brush and sketch out on your static lid a new crease for yourself. Now, obviously it's going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow, so just use slightly smaller blending brushes and you'll be absolutely fine. If you've got deep set eyes like myself, what you have to do when you're blending the colour through your crease, every so often is just stop, relax your brows, look forward and just make sure you've brought it up high enough that it's visible. As you can see, it is very, very different fixes um, for the two different eye shapes. That's why it's important to make sure you know what your actual eye shape is. Right, I am going to, I think I'm going to go in with some of these um, Jeffrey brushes, to be quite honest because I quite like them. Um, I did buy the original full set of brushes with these sort of handles. Um, loved the face brushes on those. Mm, wasn't so keen on the eye brushes. But the eye brushes that they have done this time round uh, including the JS5 and 6, which is the ones that we had last time. Um, they're a much better quality than the previous ones. So, if you were wondering, there's your answer. Now I'm going to use the natural hair brushes mainly today. I'm going to go in with a JS5. These are clean, they're just stained. I'm going to use a JS6. And then I'm going to use uh, a couple of the synthetic brushes. The JS11 smudger type brush. And the JS24 which is actually a lip brush, but I love how it gets right into that inner corner there. Awesome. Now, the palette that I am going to be using today is part of the Revolution branding. It's the Makeup Obsession range, and it's the Take It to the Grave palette, which probably should have shown you this before I zoomed in. Looks like this really lovely grungy fall autumn milk colours. So I am going, I love the names of these, the names are Six Foot Under, Graveyard, Tombstone, Deceased, Grave Digger, Pushing Daisies, Cemetery, Ghosting, Pumpkin and Undead. Except I spelled Tombstone wrong. Honestly. I don't know who is in charge at Makeup Obsession, but so far you've released a palette with the Union flag on the front, which is incorrect, and now you've misspelled Tombstone. Really? Right, I'm going to go in with the Pushing Daisies shade to start with, which is this gorgeous yellow. There's a fair amount of kick up in the pan. But it doesn't worry me because at least it means you know you're getting pigment onto your brush. Um, I always do my eyes before I do my base anyway, so I don't really care about fallout because I just wipe it away afterwards. So I'm going to start off. The beauty of this Crow and Pebble primer is it's not sticky. You don't need to set it, um, but you can blend on it immediately, as you can see. I do struggle here and here with dry patches on my eyes and that can sometimes affect how shadows blend but you know me I will tell you the truth I will let you know whether it's the shadow or my eye causing any issues That's right I do little circular movements when I'm blending and I blend in this direction towards the nose and then bounce a bit and then reverse the direction to come away from the nose. 
If you're a fan of Strictly Come Dancing, think of it as the Viennese Waltz. We start off with natural turns, then we have a fleckle, and then we have reverse turns coming back out again. Can you tell I like a little bit of uh, Strictly Come Dancing, or Dancing with the Stars as it is in America? So when I was a kid, my mum used to do ballroom dancing when she was in her 20s. Um, she used to go out pretty much every night of the week to different um, uh, ballrooms where they used to hold, and halls where they used to hold, um, you know, dances each night. So, she met my dad at one actually, even though he was in the army at the time and he can march perfectly, but uh, dancing to a beat, a little bit more of a challenge. I know when I got married and I said to dad about our first dance and he's like, yeah, you know your dad's not good at that, right? I'm like, it's okay. I've got a huge manga dress. I'm literally going to be shuffling side to side and turning around on the spot. We're not going to need to be up and down and twirling and fox trotting and all sorts. Which I think uh, was as much as a relief for him as it was for me because my frock was... Uh, well it weighed 28 kilos, put it that way. I designed it myself and found a dressmaker to make it. It's awesome, everybody thought I'd spent about 8 grand on my dress and I ended up spending under 400. Lovely dress as well. Really beautiful dress. Right, I sit back and check to make sure that uh, the shapes are the same, same each side because obviously unless you're James Charles and Photoshop your eyes they're not symmetrical. I've got a microfiber cloth here that I'm just cleaning the shadow off of this brush with. I much prefer that to using a colour switch, it's much more gentle on um, the brushes, especially when you're using natural hair brushes. Right, now I'm going to go into Graveyard, which is a really lovely deep green. As you can see, look at that, isn't that beautiful? And I'm going to add that a little bit further down the eye. I've um, tapped off a fair amount of the pigment to try and minimise fallout. But uh, this is building up nicely, so... How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't, I hope tomorrow's better for you. And if you're at the start of your day, I hope you have a good one. Why is this green going patchy? I wonder if it's the brush. Some shadows don't work well with uh, natural hair brushes. I'm going to switch to a synthetic brush. Uh, this is brush number 8 from the AliExpress set that I recommend. The film for that is uh, listed below. Yeah, this seems to be reacting much better to a synthetic brush. If you have that issue where um, you've got a shadow and it does go on patchy, initially always try a different brush because it can sometimes be just as simple as that, that, that this particular um, colour just didn't like a natural brush, it works much better and blends much better with a synthetic as you can see. Mm, still a little bit of... it's weird, in my mirror it's not patchy but in my viewfinder it is a little bit patchy just through there. Um, I'm just going to pick up some of the pumpkin which is the orange I'm going to buff that along just the edge there just to see if I can get those to blend together a bit better. Yeah, that's working quite nicely actually. 
you always get honesty with me on this channel. I will show you if a palette doesn't work out or if an eye look doesn't work out and I'll show you different tips and tricks on how to fix them. There, that's gone from a disaster to a nice soft blend. Look at that, perfect. Right, let's go back into graveyard and do the same thing on the other eye now. I'm going to stick with this synthetic brush again because obviously it did not like the natural hair brush which is fine we all have our preferences you got anything planned for Halloween this year? problem we've got is that the pub that we uh, we've been drinking at for the last few years my best mate's pub because uh, of her health she's having to to give up the pub unfortunately she and her husband and um, instead of the brewery putting in another couple to run it they decided to sell it off and we still haven't heard who's bought it yet so we don't know if it's staying a pub or if a developer has bought it and is going to turn it into housing. I really, really hope it stays a pub. Because um, as it stands, once the pub closes at the end of this month, um, we've got to find a new pub to drink in. And uh, I don't particularly like drinking in the town centre that much. It gets too... For a start off, it's not easy to park anymore in the town centre, and with me being disabled, I need to be able to park pretty much right outside the pub. Um, because of my mobility issues. Uh, but also, it, it gets very... Should we say aggressive, rowdy in town? So uh, I'm not too keen on heading into town, but there's not that many options. The uh, the other pub that we used to drink at, funnily enough, run by the same brewery, was sold off a couple of months ago, and is now going to become housing. I really don't understand what the brewery are thinking of. They clearly don't give a monkeys about the local community. Just going in with that orange again just to blend the green and the yellow together. I like how that really warms it up. I do like how that looks actually. I like it a lot. To be sure, to be sure. Hmm. Okay, so clean that brush off. Let's put that Jeffrey brush back and let's get a slightly more tapered synthetic brush. I am going to go in with this Morphe M562 and I'm going to go into Deceased, which is this sort of dirt brown basically. Yeah, so we don't really know yet what we're doing, Halloween. Um, You know, if we found another pub to drink in by then, obviously we'll go there, but if not, it might have to be a house party instead. So I'm just running this through the crease and very, very lightly blending along that line. I don't want it to come too far up, but I'm just relaxing and checking and you can just about see it above there. And I'm going to grab a little bit more. Just pop it on the outer edge of my mobile lid, just there. Yeah, this palette definitely performs much better 
with synthetic brushes. Although the yellow went on absolutely fine, the deeper colours, it would seem, need a synthetic brush. You can see that it gives it a real nice definition if you compare the two. I am going to be doing, um, in October, I've set aside f a week where instead of three uploads, the my usual Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I'm going to try and do five. I'm going to try and do Tuesday through Saturday for you with five different... Halloween looks. I'm also in a Halloween collab. That will be going up in October. And obviously I've got the Halloween in July look that I did in the collab. Obviously in July. And I've got the broken doll look that I did for last year's Halloween, so you should have a good choice of looks to choose from. And obviously with the collab that I'm in, as well as my look, you'll have everybody else's look as well. Okay. I, I'm actually quite liking this palette, it's really nice and grungy. Um, and they're, they're blending out fine, I mean, don't get me wrong, they're not an Anastasia Beverly Hills or a Jeffree Star, but, um, yeah, they're blending out okay, I'm quite pleased with that. Right, let's grab this, do I want this one, do I want a different one, let me have a look. Have I got a stubbier, yes, I have got a stubbier brush. Right. I'm going to grab... The JS10, which is a smudger brush, and I'm going to go in initially into Undead. I'm going to put this on dry to start with, just to see how much shimmer we do get. This pan is starting to hard pan instantly when I'm using it. That's annoying. Right, so let's just pop this on the outer edge of the eye. Actually, that's not bad. I don't think I need to wet that at all. I don't want it too shiny. I kind of, I quite, I'm quite enjoying this, this grungy look. Right, although it's hard panned, if you dip the tip of the bristles in and swirl, it does loosen pigment up, so you can still get pigment onto your brush. So that's good. And then do the same thing this side. It's a bit easier to show you with this side because obviously. Oh, I'm blind in this one, I can close this eye, but if I close the other eye, not a lot of makeup happens. Now, when I'm trying out a palette for the first time, I don't cut the crease, because I like to see how much opacity the shimmers have. And this is looking quite nice, actually. Quite nice indeed. Okay, I like that. Clean the brush off. And then I'm going to go in with the, what did I say it was, JS24, this lip brush. And I am going to go into the misspelled tombstone shade. This also is hard panning immediately, but again, you can get pigment up from it still, so that's good. I 
is quite oily textured. Um, pop this on the inner corner. Oh, might have from actually on screen, might not it? This is what I like about these lip brushes, you can get right into the corners. And just drag that across onto the deeper shade just to blend them two together. I quite like this. I'm not quite sure why they put a bright white in here though. It just it seems out of place with the rest of the palette, you know? Right, because I've got such deep creasing this side, I do have to stretch the lid out when I'm putting shimmers on. Otherwise, I end up with the shimmer packing loosely into the crease and then cascading down my eye through the day, which I don't like. Just blend that into the deeper shade next to it. Do you know what? I actually really like this look. Right, I'm going to pause you while I go off screen and um, put some foundation and everything on. And I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. So, for you, it will be instant for me. I'll see you the next time I press the record button. Hey, I am back. Right, grabbing this flat top brush that I used earlier, or showed you earlier. And I'm going to go into Deceased, which is that deep dirt brown. I'm going to connect it to the edge there. And just run it gently along my lower lash line. Like so. And then I'm going to use, now this, believe it or not, is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette. But I love it because it's flat topped but it's chunky so it's great for getting up under your lower lashes. And I'm going to go back into Pumpkin which is the orange that I use to blend the green and the yellow together. I'm just going to buff that gently along the lower lash line. Just to soften and warm up the brown. I really like that. Right, highlight time. And I think I will go in with... This is a Becca Light Chaser and this is Rose Quartz Flashes Seashell. And I'm just going to put that up under the tail of my brow there. I know pink seems a strange uh, combination, but this particular one I really like. Because it has more of a, a sort of like a warmish gold tone rather than the pink that it looks in the pan. 
This is an old lip brush that I bought from um, eBay about 10 years ago. But it's the perfect shape for doing this. And I like to go around the inner corner and then along under the tear duct and just blend it in with the colour that I run under the eye. Like that. Okay. I am going to pause you one last time while I chuck some highlighter over the rest of my face. Put some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with my hair and I'll be back with the finished look. So, please don't go anywhere. Hey, I'm back. Right, okay. I used the same highlighter on my cheeks and everywhere else. I used my usual Catrice Glamondol Volume Waterproof Mascara. This is an absolute dupe for Benefits Bad Girl Bang, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. Although, I understand Bad Girl Bang have now bought out a waterproof version, but obviously that's still going to be cheaper. Uh, the lipstick is the ASMR one. Uh, they have actually given me a code now, so I'll bung that in my description box as well. So, this is my finished look with the Take It To The Groove palette. Um, I like it. I mean, I've, I deliberately chose the deeper colours to see how well they blend out because, um, you know, dark colours are more difficult to create. And there's actually an equal mix. Uh, there's five mattes and five shimmers in here. Like I said, this, I really don't understand why... I've got a really, really bright white in here. Um, that just, that makes no sense to me with the rest of the palette at all. Um, I would much rather have seen um, like an, um, a mustardy yellow or maybe an olive green, something between sort of these two um, just to, to give us more options because really that's you're only going to be able to use that as a highlight shade for your brow bone your inner corner if you're pale let's be honest if, if you've got melanin that's going to look ashy as hell on you um, so I really don't understand why they've put that shade in I think that white shade is completely redundant as I said, these did hit hard pan the minute I used them, as you can see there and there. But uh, by wiggling your brush around it, not particularly hard, it was bringing some pigment up so you can still access the pigments. So although it hard pans, you don't need to scrape the top to get to the pigment. Just agitating the top with your brush will do it. Um, all in all, it's not an expensive palette. If this is a colour scheme that you're looking for and you don't have the money to buy, uh, this colour scheme actually reminds me of the new Juvia's Place one and I cannot think what it's called. Um, not Tribe, not Warrior. One that they released, was it Nomad? I think it was Nomad with the sort of peaked hat on a green background. Um, this reminds me very much of that colour scheme, so if you like the look of that but you haven't got the money to spend on that, this could be a good alternative because, as you can see, once I switched to a synthetic brush, this blended out really, really well, no problems at all. So, I hope you enjoyed this. If you are one of my 4F babies, please, please double check. You are still subscribed because YouTube are still unsubscribing people against their will. Um, it's ridiculous. I gained five people from one collab and then lost four of my older viewers literally within hours. Uh, three of them have since realised and come back. One of them is still in the wilderness somewhere. Um, but hopefully they'll find us soon and come back too. So, please double check you're still subscribed. Even if I'm still in your subscriptions, in your recommended watch list, just check you are still subscribed and check that the notification bell is rung and that it still says all notifications because then you'll get told, hopefully, every time I upload another one of these films. 
uh, speaking of which I have got a lot of other films you can watch and catch up on just in case you have been one of those ones that have been unsubscribed from me. If however you are new to the channel, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I'm a slightly scatty half Welsh, half northern bird living in the south of England who witters waffles and warbles like nobody's business. So if that seems like your idea of fun or you've enjoyed this film and if you've got this far through I'm hoping you've liked it just a little bit. It'd be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F Beauty family. It's very easy, you just click that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey. It's still free, although, you know, knowing new YouTube, how much longer that'll be the case, who knows. Right, that is quite enough for me for one day. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.